Hello and welcome to this uh, lesson on the Missio Dei, the mission of God. My name is Daniel Topf and it's my joy to be here with you for this important topic as part of the course of intercultural studies. And the reason uh, this topic is so important is because we want to make sure that in our engagement uh, with other cultures, in our understanding of intercultural dynamics that we are not only relying on on the inside of, of anthropology for example or or other studies but that we have a theological foundation of how we understand uh, cultures and also a theological foundation what's called the theology of mission of how and why we are engaged in missions and in cross-cultural work in a christian setting so we'll talk about these topics by focusing on the Missio Dei concept. There's different ways of, of understanding a mission and a theology of mission, but the Missio Dei concept, which is a, a Latin phrase, which translated means the mission of God, uh, is something that has become more prevalent in, in recent years. And I think it's, 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 it's a concept that can help us to uh, get our priorities right. Um, so, uh, we'll be talking here about a uh, historical background of the Missio Dei concept, and then uh, we'll say something about the implications of the Missio Dei concept, and then I will also mention some potential dangers of the Missio Dei concept. And in conclusion, uh, we'll say that uh, the Missio Dei concept helps us to put God first by placing an emphasis on theology of mission rather than just having human activities that maybe are not that different from what a secular person would do in a cross-cultural setting. So speaking of uh, the Missio Dei concept, we first want to understand where we came from as, as a church and how a historical understanding of mission has changed over time. And I'm relying here on an overview presented by David Bosch, who is a famous missiologist from South Africa who wrote a book uh, called Transforming Mission, which is a theology of mission that has remained very influential since it was first started, uh, first published in 1991. And so uh, what Bosch is saying is that historically mission has been understood in different dimensions, such as soteriological, meaning related to salvation with the focus of saving individuals from eternal damnation. And then there's a cultural dimension that it was about introducing people from the East, meaning like in Asia and the South, like in Africa, to the blessings and privileges of the Christian West. And then there's a church-oriented uh, understanding, ecclesiastical, where it's all about the expansion of the church or of a specific denomination. And then there's a salvation historical understanding of mission, uh, where mission is understood as the process by which the world would be transformed into the kingdom of God. And that can take different dimensions. So one can be a more apocalyptic vision where the idea is, okay, we need to preach the gospel to all nations because that's when Jesus will come back and that's when the kingdom of God will be established on earth. And another a point of view uh, which would be more uh, found usually on the more liberal theological spectrum would be to say no the kingdom of god is now maybe some would say even the millennium is now we live in the millennium now so through missions we are advancing the mission of god here on earth to the point that it can be fully established uh, but then things changed uh, in the early 20th century. There were theologians such as Karl Barth who would emphasize more the role that God plays in mission rather than putting so much emphasis on what we humans think we can do. So Karl Barth, a very famous uh, Swiss theologian at the Brandenburg Missionary Conference in 1932, emphasized mission as an activity of God himself. And uh, so that was uh, quite a revolutionary thought, but in a way it should not have been because historically in the church 
in the history of the church that had always have been the understanding uh, also when the the latin word for mission was used it wasn't used as how we understand it today it was used in the uh, uh in the context of god sending his son into the world and so that is something that was uh, more and more emphasized so also in in willingen in 1952 at at this imc conference uh, as bosch explained mission was understood as being derived from the very nature of god it was thus put in the context of the doctrine of the trinity not of ecclesiology meaning related to the church or soteriology related to salvation Bosch goes on to say the classical doctrine on the Missio Dei as God the Father sending the Son and God the Father and the Son sending the Spirit was expanded to include yet another movement Father Son and Holy Spirit sending the church into the world so as this quote makes clear there there is still a role for the church right yes it's true the church is sent into the world in that sense church is involved in mission but it's secondary what is primary is that god is a missionary god god has sent his son and god is sending the holy spirit and that is the, the primary missionary activity that we need to focus on so implications of the missio d concept are therefore as follows as Bosch explains here in several phrases that I'm quoting from him. Our mission has no life of its own. Only in the hands of the sending God can it truly be called mission. In the new image, mission is not primarily an activity of the church, but an attribute of God. God is a missionary God. And this God is a missionary God is, it has become a, a popular phrase and i think rightly so and you can also find for example an article in the perspectives reader with this title god is a missionary god mission is thereby seen as a movement from god to the world the church is viewed as an instrument for that mission to participate in mission is to participate in the movement of god's love toward people since god is a fountain of sending love and so again this idea of participating in mission has become a very common phrase. Like for example, in my master's and PhD studies at Fuller Seminary uh, here in California, where I live, I've, I've heard that a lot. Like professors talk about it, students talk about it. Oh yeah, you know, I'm participating here in God's mission and uh, or it, it, that it is a privilege to participate in God's mission. And the, the idea is to act more from a position of humility to acknowledge that, that God is, primary and he doesn't really need us in that sense but if he invites us to join then this is a is a privilege rather than uh something that that we can claim for ourselves having said that there are also dangers or at least potential dangers of the Monsieur Day concept so one is that it can lead to a new form of triumphalism that the, the thinking could be that okay we're participating in god's mission then consequently what we are doing must be the right thing to do because after all we are participating in what god is actually doing what god himself is doing uh, so that of course is not the idea of the Monsieur Day concept it's quite uh, the contrary uh, then another uh, weakness that, that also bosch points out or uh, he, po he says that with all this emphasis on god being at work in the world and, and the kingdom of god there, there can be a neglect of planting churches and saving souls. So meaning uh, these items that are very important, uh, especially to us as, as evangelicals and Pentecostals, uh, they can be pushed aside uh, in certain understandings of the Monsieur Dei concept. And uh, so the reason for that is, is that there, is a, there could be an overemphasis on how God is at work in the world through earthly historical process, for example, through political processes in a certain country. And so that leads to a secularization of mission, which again, the original Monsieur Dei concept that, uh, that Karl Barth and others uh, uh, emphasized, they were actually trying uh, to push against that, to push against the secularization tendencies that could be seen, especially in some theologically liberal circles. Um, 
But again, you know, there's always a danger that a, a concept or a new understanding is being misused. And so if you're focusing so much on historical or political processes, then you're not focusing much in, on spiritual processes anymore. In that sense, there's secularization. Or you could also say there is a tendency towards horizontalization, which means there's just a, a talk about how humans relate to each other, the horizontal dimension. But what about the vertical dimension, how God and humans relate to each other? That dimension is being lost. And then uh, the Mr. Day concept can also lead to extreme, extreme views, even to the point that it seems the church has become unnecessary for the Mr. Day, right? So some people, they would talk so much about uh, God being in the world and that it's not about the church really, but it's about how, what God is doing in the world that the church becomes unnecessary or maybe sometimes even becomes a, a hindrance. And of course, we have to acknowledge that there are weaknesses in the church, right? And everybody who has been involved in church knows about that. But at the same time, we also want to make sure that we maintain the biblical perspective that the church is not just a human institution, but the bride of Christ and as such will always play a role in God's plan. So coming back to some of the materials that, that you've looked at or that you could still look at. Uh, so like I said, uh, David Bosch is an important uh, source uh, here with his emphasis on the Monsieur Day and, and other uh, concepts that have developed more recently in discussing theology of mission. But then you also had this video entitled Biblical Basis of Missions. And at the end, it says the Bible is, is one story. It's God's story. God's story. And it talks about how God wants to reveal his glory among all the nations and that he sends his, his church until all have heard. And that in this process, he invites you, right? He invites us, which again is this idea of, of participation, uh, that we have the, the privilege, but also uh, the responsibility to participate in what God is doing as he leads us by the Holy Spirit. Uh, another way to talk about the mission of God and to dive deeper into this topic is to look at Christopher Wright's book, uh, the, the Mission of God, where based on his Old Testament studies, especially, he emphasizes how, how uh, the, the entire Bible, both Old Testament and New Testament, is about mission. Uh, with this quote here, mission is what the Bible is all about. We could as meaningfully talk of the missional basis of the Bible as of the biblical basis of mission. And so here he gives us an important uh, corrective. So I think generally speaking in, in the evangelical tradition, going maybe back to William Carey, for example, when he went as a missionary to India, there's always been an emphasis on a biblical basis of mission, for which for many of us has been Matthew 28, right? The Great Commission where Jesus says, go and make disciples of all nations. And we're like, okay, the Bible says we need to go into all the world, so we're gonna do it. And so what Wright is saying, yes, that is one purpose uh, of, of, of a theology of mission, but more profoundly, the entire Bible is a missionary document in the sense that God created the, the, this world and when sin entered this world, from the beginning, from Genesis to Revelation, we can always see God at work in his passion to to redeem the world and to reach out to humanity. And then, of course, we've got uh, John Piper, and he's got an article with the title, Let the Nations Be Glad in the Perspectives Reader, but it's also an entire book. And the idea uh, that he proclaims is that missions is not the ultimate goal of the church. Worship is. Missions exist because worship doesn't. Worship is ultimate, not missions, because God is ultimate, not man. So what Piper is doing here, again, he's helping us to move the, uh, the, the, the focus from our human activities, such as missions, uh, that sometimes can be human activities, to, to what matters to God, which what matters to God is that he's being worshipped among all nations. And so uh, it's, it's a reminder to be more God-centric and less human-centric in, in our approach to missions, in our approach to cross-cultural work. And that is really the main point 
of this lesson. So I'll leave you with that.